Here at the Base Beach Trilogy Podcast, I'm the host, Manuel Chavez. We're here with Mr. Hayward, also known as the Vin Scully of Bishop Amon. And he has a bunch of stories to tell about Alma basketball and Alma football. So can you fill in the blanks on your background, Mr. Hayward? Uh, as far as Bishop Amon goes? As far okay. as any, just in general. Okay, so, in, uh, oh boy, I could go way back. I'll go back to high school for that matter. I, uh, I attended St. Gabriel Mission High School. Uh, from 1960 to 1964, and, um, as, a, as a baseball player. And uh, in our league was a school called Bishop Amat, which was fairly new at the time. Uh, I think the first graduating class was like maybe 60 or 62, so they're a brand new school. You know, we'd never heard of them because we are on the west end of the valley. But we found out about them in a hurry, man. We came out here and eight, eight times I played against Bishop Amat. We got pounded. Seven of the times, and when we beat them, it was considered the, one of the biggest upsets in high school baseball at that particular time. They were coming off winning the Long Beach tournament. We come straggling in there and beat them three to one. I was shocked the uh, high school baseball world at the time. That was 1963. But um, anyway, I, I made a decision. I mean, once I get into young adulthood, that I had, thinking back, I had so much respect for that school, as young as it was. And they drew pretty much, you know, from, from the East Valley. There was not a whole lot of recruitment at that time. And uh, I decided one day, if I had children, that's where I was going to send them. So, and it worked out that way. So, so uh, what was, how did your involvement with Fish and Water start? So, in 1987, my, my son was, uh, he just graduated from All Souls in Alhambra, which is where we lived in Alhambra. Um, he was told, he had no choice where he was going to school, he was told he was going to Bishop Ahmad. Well, the kids in this class, once again in Alhambra, had not even heard of the school. He had not heard of it. And he was questioning all along, why am I going there? And I said, well, it's not your choice, it's mine. You know, so I've decided that's the best place for you. Because all his buddies were going to, you know, Loyola, St. Francis, Salle, Salesian Cathedral, Cantwell. And so they did Never heard of Bishop Ahmad. So, mm. anyway, that's where it started. Is the fall of 1987 as a freshman, uh, he was a baseball guy, so he had heard and read about how good this base- basketball program was during the summer. Uh, they were they were really considered one of the premier programs in the state of California. They're winning summer tournaments, etc. So the, when he got there, he wanted to get involved right away because he didn't know anybody. So he volunteered to be a manager on the basketball team. So after a few weeks of doing that, he, he came home and asked me if I'd be interested in announcing. And I said, oh, not really. Uh, why? They have no announcer? He goes, no. So about the third time he asked me, I said, I'll tell you what. Um, if they can't get anybody else, I'll do it. So uh, I met with Coach Acosta prior to the start of the season and uh, been there ever since. This will be uh, just complete my 34th year of basketball at Bishop Lamont. And uh, it's been a very enjoyable ride. So is that how you started calling the game? I, I did. Matter of fact, that, that, very, that very team, well, since I've been there, the last 34 years, it's certainly the, the best basketball team that, that I've ever seen at Bishop Lamont. Um, they were the number one team. They were ranked number one in the CIF, number one in the state. I can even tell you their line. Jeff Lear was a center. Uh, the two guards were the, the twins, the Lamb brothers, which was Clarence and Terrence. And um, uh, Stefan Pace was a forward, was an excellent football player, played football at the you know, University of Southern California. And the fifth was the junior Pablo Patino. But they were really that good. Matter of fact, uh, they were in the Angeles League at the time, and they actually beat modern day twice in the league. And at that time, I'm, I'm not sure it ever happened before, and I'm certainly sure it's never happened since, where modern day was beaten twice during the lead. But uh, as I say, the third tab's a charm. So they met in the sports arena for the CIF title game, you know, and uh, they ended up losing. But uh, anyway, that was, that was, well, the basketball season was 1987-88. So I guess it would be considered the 87 season. Mm-hmm. And they end up going to state and, and eventually end up getting beat by L.A. Fremont in the regionals. But, but they were, that, that's a, the, the best basketball team I've seen. And they've had some really good ones, but that was special.
Every McKnight was there in 87. Thank you, Boyd. Every McKnight from Mount Bay. Was oh, no, yeah, he was there. Uh, I, I actually go pretty close to him because he'd seen me for a few years in those years. And uh, uh, very good. Well, I shouldn't say he's a good friend, but we kind of knew each other. And then they left the league uh, because uh, uh, modern day, or not modern day, but um, the, the Orange County was growing. Jay Cerro was just established. And San Margarito had just been there for a while. And they didn't want to travel to the West. So they took the Angeles League, made it strictly Orange County, and that's where we are today. You know, for the most part, and with the exception of football, we're playing in the, the Delray League, which is, you know, where we are now, so. Who are the top, top players in Monterey at that time? You know, what sport? Basketball. In basketball. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. This, well, I wasn't that familiar with their big names, um, but uh, there was a there was a guy that probably the the biggest name in that particular era that uh, he was the yeah, player of the year, All American McDonald's guy and whatever, and he ended up going to he ended up playing at SC and he kind of washed out after that, and so never made it, you know, in the in the big time. But what I remember of those teams is. I'm not sure any of them. They all went to college for sure, but I don't think there's any names I recall that played in the NBA, for example. And uh, there certainly wasn't anybody from Bishop Lamont that got that far. But uh, who knows? That day may come. So, so about uh, your broadcasting, is there any mentors that you looked up to that you probably like want to emulate? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, as a young kid, I'd go play in the yard, and I'd play a lot of base. Baseball was always my game. Played them all, but baseball was was what I favored the most. And I'd play out there by myself, and every swing I took, every ball I fielded, you know, I was guys using Vince Scully's name, call in the background. Uh, great Vince Scully. He's the, yeah, if there was ever a mentor for me, uh, it'd certainly be him. He's he was special. Even to this day, he's just amazing. He could still do it. I know he could, but uh, I guess at some point you gotta you gotta call it quits. But uh, anyway, we'll see how that plays out. Yep. Uh, so about I'm on football. You've been broadcasting for how long? Yeah, the last year was the 32nd year. I can uh, I, I I've been blessed. I, I'm honored to say that uh, I worked for some great coaches: Mark Brady, Tom Salter, uh, Mike DeFiore, and Mark Verdi. In the last 13 years with the great Steve Haggerty. So the legacy of Bishop Lamont football and those coaches will live forever in my mind. It's been just a, it's been just a great ride. And, um, Steve Haggerty, he's, I'm sure he's been far and away, of, uh, definitely coached more games than anyone in Bishop Lamont history. So I'm not sure how many wins he has, but it's got to be, um, ex- it's got to exceed well over 100. And I'm sure there's nobody else that's, maybe I'm wrong, that's got close to 100 wins as a coach. So he's kind of been a league by himself. Mm-hmm. Still waiting for that first CI championship team. And, you know, it's it's coming. I can feel it. It's coming. So so what's what's the biggest game you ever called? Wow. Wow, well, that's, that's a tough one. But I'll, I'll say there's one that really sticks out in my mind. And that was uh, Steve Haggerty. I believe it was his very first year. We were coming off some rough seasons, the previous few, and and so uh, walked in that team that came into town was a nationally renowned program uh, from Ventura County by the name of St. Bonaventure, and uh, they came in to Bishop Lamont, and it was like nobody gave us a chance, nobody, and uh, we beat them, we beat them, and I saw something I've never seen before since, they rushed the field, I mean that dog pan you saw, I mean, they just rushed the field. I've never seen that. It was pandemonium in a good way. But, uh, yeah, that was special. So can you describe, like, the atmosphere? Like, what everyone thought you in a booth? Or? Oh, man, it was, yeah, it was like a, a student body, you know. <laughs> I used to think most of them aren't even paying attention to the game, right? They having their own good time. But, man, they were into it. The fans were, it was unbelievable. I would say, with, with the exception of that game, 
far as crowds go, et cetera, it was when we played Modern Day at home. Those draw tremendous crowds. Loyola early on drew tremendous crowds. Great programs. So what do you think about, I know the Damien game this year was pretty big, too. Yeah. You know, and it was uh, Fred Robledo uh-huh. in the Tribune. He started spouting and telling everybody how good Damien was with all the transfers, the new coach. And so he, boy, he had them as a big favorite over us. And they just walked in there and uh, hanging their heads walking out. So that was a great start to this team that uh, went on every, really a, a very good season. You know, they ran into the Alamany team uh, just uh, one too many times. But, yeah. but they're, they're, they're going to be there. They got a, they got a strong team coming back, and I think they got some transfers coming in. So really looking forward to the next football season. So according to you, what are the three most greatest teams that you've ever seen? Oh boy. Well, I, I think you got to give credit to the 92 team. The 92 team, they won the CIF – and uh, they were at a perfect 14 and zero. Went into at the time what was called a Reebok Bowl, which is a postseason game, and that was uh, the number one team in the city, LA City, versus a number one team in the CIF. And, and we played them. We hosted them. We didn't host them. We played them at the Coliseum in Los Angeles and beat them handily. We were the first 15 and zero team in California state history. So that was that was pretty special. And then after that, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of good ones. I, I mean, if you're going by CF championship teams, you'd probably have to say 95. But, you know, the best football, high school football team I ever saw was 94. That was the Dale McCutcheon, Corey Minor year that, that just had, I mean, just everybody on the, everybody on the team was a D1 kid. It was, they, were, they, were, they were number one team in, in, the, in the state, the CIF, and the nation. All the way through the regular season, I mean, ESPN was was in there. I think Dalen was a co-offensive national player of the year. Period. So that's how good they were. And of course, they went on to have great careers. But that was a very special team. So, but then the one after that would have to be the Seattle Championship team in '95 with, with the great Ralph Brown. Um, you know, there's been so many great running backs in Bishop Vermont. But I would say that nobody carried a team and ran harder than Ralph Brown. He was amazing. The number of hits he took, I mean, I was, I, I would, it wouldn't surprise me if he played that whole season with concussions. I mean, he just got pounded. But he was relentless. A tremendous running back. So can you describe what it was like calling games and there was like ESPN there and there was like all these big like yeah, you know, you know, it's funny. We, we got, we kind of got used to it. We, you know, originally it was kind of a big deal to have them there, and uh, and then you know we used to just have the Tribune, et cetera. But yeah. but all of a sudden with those teams, yeah, ESPN, local television stations, had choppers overhead, doing some filming, and yeah, it just it was amazing. But you get used to it when you're that good. Yeah. You know, we were that good. You know, and that span was. I would guess, I'm going to say 80s through you know, mid to late 90s where Michigan Mile was just right, nationally renowned. They were, they were that good. So what are the three players, in your opinion, the greatest players you've ever seen? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it was a, it started Bishop Mile's history. I think their legacy started with a passing game, believe it or not, Pat Hayden and J.K. McKay back in 70, 71, 72, followed by John Shara. And that's where the legacy began. But shortly after that, uh, it became a running back. And, you know, they talked about University of Southern California being, you know, a running back university. Well, that's what Bishop Amon became. And I started with Eric Bieniemy, and followed with Maisie Royster. And when I came in there, the first one was Motu Ely. And then you go from there to, you know, Rodney Sermons and, and Scott Fields. I mean, they did Dale McCutcheon and... I mean, it, it was just, you could go on and on with those those great running backs, you know. Um, and then you had Scott Fields, and, and then uh, you had the Moore brothers, uh, Jalen and Damien, and then Wagner's William Wagner, and Michael Wagner, 
It just goes on Toriano's sweet toward the end. Actually, the kid that's coming back this year is going to be a good one. Aiden yeah. Ramos. Aiden yeah. Ramos. Yeah, he put up. Matter of fact, that last game, the regular, that was against Alameda. I think he ran for 276 yards against the CF Championship team. So I expect a lot out of him, and I'm sure he'll deliver. But, uh, yeah, those running backs are special. Defensively, um, of course, uh, it's been that's what wins games. But the names that stick out there, I mean, you can go back to the 92 team. Uh, the defensive, well, as a CI player of the year, was a defensive lineman of all things. And I, I, I guarantee you, before then and since then, that's never happened. That's how dominating it was. The great Will Hans Zeely. Will Hans Zeely was a, a CIF player of the year. Yeah, and that just doesn't happen to a lineman. But, uh, you know, and then they had the Huma brothers, Ramogi and Reggie Huma, that were just stalwarts. And later, this Davis Casadas that came out of nowhere had a very, very special year. But he went on defense. There's only a few names, but there have been some great ones there. So, just a personal favor, can you talk about um, the great Donnie McCluskey? Certainly. Absolutely. No, Donnie McCluskey, uh, real special. You know, he played with he played with a couple of kids. Those that team should be mentioned only because uh, they had a they had a uh, combination of great, they had a very good quarterback, uh, in Michael Lange, uh, to Adam Simon, but the, the what opened up that passing game was a great Donnie McCluskey. McCluskey, if I remember right, he, I remember he had, I think it was one of his last games, he, he ran for over 300 yards, if I remember. He was special, absolutely. He had two tremendous years. I also have two years, and that's, that's hard to do at the, the D1 level. But, yeah, he was, once again, one of many, many, many great running backs, Donnie McCluskey. So you, you talked about, before this, that Galen McCutcheon was the greatest. Yeah, I have. Uh, he's certainly the most versatile. I've never seen anybody uh, reverse direction and change speeds like he could. His lateral movement, his forward speed was just totally, it separated him as far as I'm concerned from everyone else. There were a couple of guys out of Mir High School that were brothers that uh, I don't recall their name. They were very similar McCullough. style. Pardon? The McCullough brothers? Yes. Yeah, the McCulloughs. And they were very, they were special. And uh, they were very similar to him. But the difference that set him apart from everybody was, you know, he could have been, if he would have been a, a tailback for four years at Bishop Oman, he could have been as a freshman. He was that good. He had put up two, 2,500 yards a year easily. He was that good. But uh, in those days, you had to pay your dues as a tailback. You know, you, you, you had to be, you had to be, you know, unless there was a senior guy ahead of you, you had to wait your turn, and he did. You know, he didn't start till the senior year, and he could have been there as a freshman. As a sophomore, he was a wide receiver, first team all CIF, wide receiver, defensive back, return punts, kicks, special. His speed, though, was lateral speed was special. And his, and his breakaway speed, there's, yeah, there's nobody like him. So, <clears throat> obviously, you watched Dyson play, but how was it, like, watching his dad and then watching him? Like, was it like well, it never really got a chance to see him, actually. If you remember, he didn't play his senior year. That's, right. That's the sad part. But you know, I missed the game he had against Modern Day when he ran for it. He put up almost 300 yards of total offense against, I think, the team that had won uh-huh. the CIF. So there's no question he was he was good. But I, I find it hard to believe he, you know, he was uh, as good as his dad. Uh, he was a chip off the old block. He was good, though. But I didn't get to see him the senior year, so it's yeah, not fair. It's cold. Not fair. He was well, longer and leaner than his dad, but I don't know. I don't know if anybody's been that quick. So you watch obviously been watching the football game for thirty three years. How has it changed since you first oh, started? Oh, the, well, it really has in a big way. They ran the I formation for the, probably the first 10, 12 years and then they started opening up to a spread and it's what you see now. You know, I think of the spread today and, and put some of the quarterbacks that never really were in it. I can think of Rio Reese. And, uh, if you put him in a spread offense or Michael Lange, and, and I can hate to think of the numbers they could have put up. But, uh, yeah, it, that's probably the biggest change. 
Uh, it was I in terms of uh, players. You know, like, nowadays, like the modern day of the world versus like even like the first sets of the world. Well, I don't know if you want me to get into that. It's I don't know. It's 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 not it's no. Let's put it this way. I mean, you've got Division One, and then you've got just the the uh, the, the not the Angels League. The uh, what's the the Trinity League? Well, the Trinity League is kind of a really literally a league by themselves. I mean, the recruiting they're able to do, and you know, these kids are coming from some of them from all over the nation, and and they, all the transfers within the league is. And that's all. It's a little bit different than what everybody else does. So uh, I think the CIF got it right. You know, when they made that open division or Division One, now eight teams. Unfortunately, Bishop Vermont, prior to this last season, always was the seventh or eighth seed in that. It wasn't even a, a fair playing field that they were playing against. It was kind of it. It was just hard to watch, knowing the the differences between. What we represent and what they represent. And I don't know if uh, this is anything that Bishop Obama would be, be sanctioning, <laughs> be saying this, but uh, that's the way I feel about it, and I think the general public feels that way. I mean, uh, it, it's it's pretty obvious. So uh, in the past where Bishop Obama competed with the modern day Division One, the best of the best of the state, do you think that Bishop Obama will ever get to that level again? I think what they're going to do is I think they'll get to a legitimate Division One level. Now, whether they ever get to that super team level, like you see St. John Bosco and you see Modern Day, with each one of those teams, you're probably getting 15 D1 kids, you know, on each team. You know, we're reaching mind. I mean, over the last 10 years, we're fortunate if we get one or two. So... I don't think we'll see that, but I think what we will see is if this all plays out and you see a, you know, those, those schools maybe in a separate division competing and everybody else legitimately, in, like in Division One, you've got, and that's kind of where we were at this year, you know, where we were at in the playoffs and we can compete every day with anybody as far as I'm concerned. But when you get to the, the level where those teams are at, it's just, just not fair. So that's it from the football section. So a quick break from our sponsors. So an obvious question when you come back is, do you ever call baseball the NFL? So Absolutely. I call them all. Yeah. Oh, you want me to get into the whole background? I can do that. I'll tell yeah. you all the sports I've done, I'm sure. You can do a little bit of basketball because I was okay. in that's Okay, let's, let's, let's go. go. Yeah. All right, we're back from our break with Mr. Hayward. Um, now onto the football, I mean, not the football, the basketball section. Can you name the biggest basketball game you ever played? Okay, so I would have to say, and I, I can't tell you what the year was, but uh, Gardena Serra was a legitimate CIF power for many years. And uh, I want to say it was probably somewhere in the, I don't know, early to mid-2000s, uh, we were in the new gym at the time, and uh, Gardena Serra came in, and uh, number one team in the Seattle, number one team in the state, goes on and on. They had the uh, Marquise Lee, um, uh, Robert Woods, and there was a third one, and the third one was actually the, the best player of the three that went on to play to SC. George Farmer, that's who it was. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, they came in there and just watched them warm up. It was scary. You couldn't, you weren't allowed to dunk in the pregame. All they did was go way up above the rim and just drop it in. But it was kind of scary to look at. But but I'll tell you what, we we beat them. And it, it, without a doubt, I had a buddy of mine from work that uh, came and watched the game for the first time. And uh, I, had to tell, I told him, this is the biggest upset in Bishop of my history, as far as I'm concerned. I look at I look at that as a bigger upset than the Bonaventure football game. Quite honestly, it's hard it's hard for me to tell. But you'd have to ask Daniel Rodriguez because that'll stick out very well in his mind. Coach Erdl was coaching. Pardon? Was Coach Erdl coaching? Yes, he was. Brian Erdl was coaching. So that's Probably like twenty eleven. He started coaching in like old five. He said he said Robert Woods. So that's like yeah. Woods, Marquise Lee. Yeah. Those are the guys that we're playing against. So. 
Yeah, no, that was uh, that was, that was huge. I didn't even know they played basketball. Who's that? Well, I didn't even know they played basketball. They did. <laughs> they did. He sleep. Of, of the three, but if you remember, he got he, we we on or off. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I have. Of the three, yeah, without a doubt, he's the most touted. I mean, you look at as, as a football guy, he you know, was a great basketball player, but as a football guy, he was the most sought after guy in the nation, I think. Mm-hmm. More so than Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. But that's how those Sarah teams are just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Both, both sports are crazy good. So, what would be with you? Yep. He had injury issues and uh, he's kind of basically. Washed out of SC, but tried out for a couple of NFL teams and just didn't make it. Of course, yeah, we. Yeah, Mark Lee, he may be in the lineup, but he was a more of a defensive player at the start. Mark Lee? Yeah. He might have been only because he was a great receiver, but they didn't throw the ball much, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, which takes me back to the Bishop Amont teams with, uh, with Tyler Vaughn's and. Brian Ar- Brandon Arcanado, two receivers with quarterbacks, Damien Garcia and, and Ryder Reese. I mean, those were the best throwing Bishop Amat teams ever. I mean, those two receivers were off the. I mean, Ryder Reese came in. That, that's the guy, the football player, I'd say, that had a run for a short period of time because of the injury to Damien Garcia. Uh, Ryder Reese came in, nobody knew much about him. But he had a run of about six, seven games. He was throwing well over 300 yards a game. Dark and Otto and Vaughn's. He got him to the to the semifinals of the Seattle Championship game and uh, lost to uh, Corona Centennial on an extra point. But that team was, I mean, they could throw the football. I had Ryder Reese in that span. And unfortunately, that was his junior year. Both those guys were juniors. They were seeing Reese. So they came back for their senior year, and the feeling was, well, uh, Garcia got hurt, so that's why Ryder had to follow him. But uh, so obviously Damien started, and Ryder filled in on occasion, but uh, never got that shot he did as a junior. That junior year, what he did was really special. So back to basketball. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's your no, game. Fine. Fine. I'm sorry, that's your game. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. You got a special game. I, I, was, I was really impressed with you. Thank you. No, seriously. I didn't, I didn't realize that until right now who I was talking to. No, really. Man, you're, you're, what a hell of a year you got. And you're coming back. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Um, so what are the top three basketball teams that you ever seen? Um, well, obviously, that first year, that was out of doubt the best. Uh, the team that won it, and I'm not sure what, uh, what year that was. Um, geez, what year was that? Was it 88? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That team, they, 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 were, they were good. Um, Haywood, I think, was the CI player of the year that year. But uh, I don't know. I, I still think the one with Daniel Rodriguez in, the beat Sarah, uh-huh. you know, they, they ran into a a very difficult playoff situation. They were playing, I think it was Price out of, they were playing teams that were, I mean, guys were 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 6'10", six, you know, in the playoffs. But, you know, quite honestly, the team that won it, I think, was it 88? Uh, that division they were in was, uh, wasn't any division that these those recent Bishop of Lot teams played in. Those were, I mean, those were just outstanding. You know, and like that, Daniel Gerson, Rodriguez team was that was that was good probably the second best team and the yeah. CF championship probably was a third. How good was Daniel Rodriguez? Like He's a big, he was outstanding. Oh, you know those you know that original team that I spoke about earlier. All those guys were they were all good. Um, and uh, but I'd say since then probably as, as a single player, Daniel Rodriguez without a doubt. I, I think they are. They hung his number up there, too, yeah. if I remember right. It's in the Hall of Fame. That's another thing. Bishop Mount Hall of Fame, uh, to be inducted, you know, the rule used to be, and I never knew it changed, but it was supposed to be the Seattle Player of the Year. And there are few in there that weren't. And uh, that's why it was kind of, I don't know what the rule is today, but 
it was kind of like that. It's like Dodger baseball, you know. You have your, you know, your number retired. Hey, you better be a Hall of Famer, right? That's the way the Bishop Bond Hall of Fame was to have your number retired to see how play of the year. So, I, but there are a few in there that that weren't. So I don't know if, what, if the rules have changed or what. But anyway, no, no, they're both CIF. There'd be there'd be 150 guys in there. There wouldn't be any numbers. <laughs> It wouldn't be. But uh, 2018, 2018. 2018, yeah, help me out there. I, I'm not going to go to the uh, Oh, you're talking about the basketball yeah. team? Oh, yeah. No, they were they were really good. They had, what they had that year was pretty good size. And uh, Damien Moore was their point guard, which was 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 kind of needy. That, that's one thing about him is, you know, you can appreciate this being a basketball game. Yeah. If you ever see tape on him, I mean, you watch him and he, as he's dribbling, I mean, he's almost at that. I mean, he, he looks like he's totally leaned out. He's just so quick. And through the, I mean, he, he can get through the middle of that key just with quickness. You know? But uh, he struggled sometimes with the layup, but, but he was good. He was, a, he was a heck of a point guard. And I think he had that he had that uh, football injury that cost him a senior year in basketball. Now that that hurt him, but uh, but he was he was a heck of a point guard. But that team was good. They had good size, is what I remember. Uh, they were yeah, they were good. So what has changed from like in terms of players and teams from when you first started to now? In basketball. basketball. In terms of basketball, oh, without a doubt, it's the three point. Um, unfortunately, Steph Curry has revolutionized the game. You see kids on the playground, I mean, grammar school kids uh, throwing up threes all day. Nobody wants to play defense. I'm, I'm going to tell you something about Brandon Hurdle's teams. You know, I mean, there's people that, you know, that there's always going to be people that, uh, you know, think that Michigan Wild basketball should be a lot better. But in my very humble opinion, I'm not sure there's anybody that does more with the talent he has than he does. And they do. I mean, Bishop and my teams play defense. They're not going to be very big, but they're going to scrap. And those are the, that's the kind of, that's what he does. He touches that. And uh, you know well, it's, uh, you guys, uh, you're scrappers, you play defense. And that's what, you know, in spite of size, uh, that's what wins a lot of games. Yeah. So. Given how big um, football is, the success it had over the years, and, and baseball as well, what do you think the biggest reason why basketball hasn't followed suit? Well, you know, I think a lot of people expected that with a new gymnasium. It hasn't come quite to fruition. And it's, I mean, I don't know. We're just, uh, let's face it, we're not getting big kids in the school. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's all about. I'm not sure that other schools are able to do what we're not able to do in terms of getting that type of kid into a school. So, I can't answer that question. I can just say that with what they have, they do extremely well with. But yeah, I, I, I'm sure that once again, that once that beautiful facility was built, it was kind of like the, it's kind of like Field of Dreams. They will come, right? Uh, we're still waiting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's. Football has gotten those big players. Britain? Football has gotten those big players. They have not. No, they haven't. They. We're getting well. We're, we get a lot of kids that, because of the tradition of the school, we're getting kids with their brothers and their their kids now. I mean, I got Shays and the Guzmans. I, I I just recently uh, announced their kids in football, and they were on the '92 CI championship team, and their kids are playing now and done work very well. So I'm beginning to now see kids of kids that that I started with. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you how old you're getting, I guess. But anyway, I guess it'd be the alternative. I came close there once, so I don't want to do that again. So um, we can move on to baseball. So what? So back, I think you asked me a little bit earlier about other sports I've done, and um, I'm, I, I think I mentioned earlier I was a baseball guy. Okay. So and I grew up with Ben Scully, and I love doing baseball. And, uh, and I've done baseball over the years. Some coaches have asked me to do it, others haven't. Some of this, some have asked me to do the Seattle playoffs, which I've done. Uh, anytime they ask me, I, I certainly would be happy to do it. 
um, you know, it comes at, you know, in early in the afternoon. Sometimes that's difficult to make. But And I've done Seattle girls softball with some great teams. So that's been fun. But you know what I've done recently? And that's been uh, a totally out-of-body experience for a while. But I got used to it and love it. It's volleyball. Uh, I've done, I started doing boys volleyball playoffs probably five or six years ago. And girls volleyball playoffs. This past season, they asked me to do the league games, which I did, and the, and the, and the postseason too. And, and I really have fallen in love with, with volleyball. And that girls volleyball program, they're going to be really good this year. They, they were co-champions a year ago. And so they're coming in this year, and they're all underclassmen. I mean, they're, they were all you know, freshmen, sophomores, juniors a year ago, so they didn't really lose anybody, so they're all back. So there's big expectations for the volleyball program next year. So you, uh, have you ever called like, any like, big baseball games? Like, Oh, yeah. No, I, uh, well, the one game I do remember I did a, a semifinal game. I believe it was a semifinal game. It was at the University of Southern California. So I've done a few games there because of baseball mm-hmm. for playoffs. And uh, it was Rio Reese's junior year. And uh, the relief pitcher, the name escapes me. My, that's, that's horrible to come up here totally unprepared like that. But um, he went on to UCLA. Help me out here. UCLA? He went on to UCLA. Did yeah. it. Any of all say all say give a value for the trivia? I got a uh, thirteen. Okay. All CI first team. You first team all CI? Yeah. Oh, really good for you. Thank you. Wow. So that so right away, you're in the you're in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Once you first team all CI, you're in the Hall of Fame. Now you got to get your number retired. To do that, you got to win the CI. Yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. Well. So you're going to be a senior next year? Yep. So who's the other your buddy that's going to be a junior? My other buddy? Yeah, the other, the other guard. Marco. Yes. Mark, yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, you guys, you guys can be tough. Yep. But, uh, right. is it going? Yeah. Oh, so back to the other question about doing broadcasting past Fish Vermont. Thanks. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, no, not really. Uh, no. Nothing's, no one's really ever approached me except that one situation. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I'll tell you what I did. This did it did one year. This was this was special too, because I, I once again the Dodgers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah. And Ben Scully being Ben Scully, so I heard that the uh, the public address announcer was leaving. So I decided to put a tape together and sit in to see if uh, I get a tryout. Public address announcing job, and uh, they gave me that trial. So I went up into the booth, and uh, I thought I did a really good job. Actually, I kind of announced a lineup of, of uh, old Dodgers that, like the '65 team, for example, that I was a bad boy of, mm-hmm. and I didn't remember all those guys. When it was all said and done, I thought yeah, I did pretty well. The guy comes up to me and he goes, "Hey, man, you, you, you're really good for radio." What do you mean? I go, no, I said, what public address announcer? You got, you got a voice for radio. He says, well, what does that mean? Well, probably doesn't resonate or deep enough or whatever. And I go, I guess that means I didn't get the job there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway. I would say that when I hear you announce it sometimes, are you familiar with Johnny Mose? Johnny who? Johnny yeah. Mose, uh, the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Yes. I never was Johnny Mose. Somebody who. Yeah, it's, it's the voice has actually gotten softer as a result of a, a health issue I had a few years ago. So it's it just hasn't really come back, but but I, hopefully it's good enough. Yeah. yeah. So do you have any last question? What? I I would I would need to have a roster in front of me and all kinds of good stuff to pull that one off. Because in other words, when I do basketball, if you notice. I'll tell you who the shooter is, who the assist was, you know, and that kind of thing. Well, we should ask Calvin, um, the basketball team is an even experience you haven't had with the game. Well, that's the plan, right? Mm-hmm. What's the question? Um, 
you just need to practice where where the where the champions now stand. Something about something like Manuel Chavez for three. <laughs> no, you should tell us to say uh, Manuel Chavez for three assist Eli Chavez. Say it again. Say it again. I think that's all good. Do you have one more question? Let's do all the questions. Okay. Uh, do you have one more? What do you think? Oh yeah. Uh, How has the school itself changed since you've been there? How has the school itself changed since you've been there for all of you? Well, I don't know. That would be a real tough question to answer. I mean, uh, I think to answer that question, you'd have to be around the school, you know, during the day and attend classes, etc., etc. We have school body, right? Was there a dog pound when you first started coaching? I mean, we're going to announce the game. No. No, that dog pound. <laughs> the dog pound's pretty special. You know, you know we, we, the basic thing about it was pre-pandemic, if I remember right, the somebody, the, the athletic, I don't think it was the athletic department, but I think the school uh, came down on the, the uh, dog pound for unruly behavior, you know, with the small oh, and yeah. all that. So I think uh, as a result, um, they started, I think they banned the dog pound for a short period of time, didn't they? Something wait, longer. Wait, after COVID? That was pre-COVID. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. But I know there was, there was some kind of a, a resentment there from uh, the student body that they weren't showing up because of, I think it was uh, unruly behavior as a result of you know, some of the antics I guess they were doing. But uh, no, that dog pounce, they, they play a very important part <laughs> in Bishop of Wild Football. They really do. Yeah, they're, they're a fun group to, to see do well. And, um, and the football team obviously visits them when the, when the game is over. So they think very highly of them. So yeah, dog pounce is good. But yeah, that, that would, if you're talking about games, you know, that would be a change for sure. All right, last question. We're going to ask this. If a parent or a family is considering Bishop Vermont amongst other schools, what are the reasons they should pick this or not? All right, so last question. If a parent is considering other schools, why should they pick Bishop Vermont? Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, you know, there's a lot of kids that are going there for uh, maybe athletic reasons or academic reasons. My opinion is that If you're an athlete, you should be going there for, for both, knowing that you're going to get a good education because, you know, when that scholarship comes, uh, you know, you still got to show something in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So you got to be prepared for that. And if you're not, there's a lot of disappointments. and You might be a D1 athlete, end up at a junior college, which I'm not saying is bad. I'm just saying you, you could have possibly given up a, a four-year free education. So that would be number one. And I think... You know, I've said this, and I'll tell, say this to anybody, especially from the San Gabriel Valley. You know, Bishop Lamont is the only one, as, as far as the football side of it goes, that plays in the Division One program. You know, you, you got to go as far west as the San Fernando Valley, or as far east as the St. John Bosco to find a football program of that magnitude. And uh, as a football player, I, I would say something you should highly consider. But as as it's just an athlete, I say, man, it's just a, it's just a, it's a great experience um, from what I've seen because I've, I've seen all the all the sports there pretty much. And I, what I what I see there is is it's like a, a brotherhood. I see a, a real genuine friendship. Uh, um, I mean, they, these these athletes actually love each other. It, it, it appears to be, and uh, there's a real sense of teamwork. I don't think you see that in a lot of schools. It's it's about me and it's about numbers, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think they they allow that there. Uh, the coaching staffs there they're not concerned about numbers. They're concerned about getting players on the field, you know. And of course, winning is is always important. But it's it's the total experience, and it's not about numbers. They don't care what your numbers are, quite honestly. Uh, 
They just want them. They just want the best experience for the team and a win. You know, in the interim too. So that that's what I would say. All right. Uh, so that's it. That's a wrap on this episode of the Future Trilogy Podcast with Mr. Hayward. Thank you for coming. Incidentally, that's Brian Hayward. Brian Hayward. <laughs> and uh, boy, I, I feel very fortunate in uh, being interviewed by the great man, Will Chavez. <laughs> you know, boy, I called his name a few times this last season. He probably hasn't told you, but uh, you now he's a first team. Uh, oh, is it Del Rey or El Camino Real? Del Rey. Del Rey League. El oh, Camino Real. Camino Real. Yeah, well, he's not even sure, but but anyway, uh, first team all Seattle Southern Section, so he's already in the Hall of Fame with uh, his senior year yet to come, and who knows what that senior year will bring. He might bring something along the line of Madden well, Chavez for three! God, assist Eli Chavez! Lancers win CIF title! Bishop Omar Lancers! Manuel Chavez! <laughs> I don't know how that's going to turn out, but hey.